Hi, our lesson for now would be the language and symbols of mathematics. The importance of understanding any language is the ability to use such language to be able to be clear about what you want to say and to clearly also understand somebody talking with you. So always language is used for interactive communication and it is used well and best when both of the of the parties are able to understand properly and adequately all the symbols used in such language and mathematics as a science has a set of symbols that can dynamically grow into some other symbols but most of its major symbols are understood to be conventional forms so this lesson will be about the characteristics of the language of mathematics and the major symbols of mathematics so the characteristics of the language of mathematics are it is precise powerful beautiful and elegant there could be some other characteristics but this for me are the major ones the language of mathematics being precise means that is that it has rules a set of rules that's understood across all sciences has specific notation and uses a set of symbols when we say that the language must be precise then the meaning of the word for any language for that matter used as a means of communication the source of the language conveys a message and the receiver of the message must be able to understand whatever is the message in the same context as intended by the one who made the message as in any language or communication medium the interaction between the speaker and the receiver of the language is confined to a set of meaning for specific words used and so with the, the language of mathematics the symbols used and the notation used must be understood from either the giver of the information or the receiver of the information that the language of mathematics is powerful is to say that it is the secret in the understanding of the world why in any phenomenon in life one can understand how this phenomenon behaves when it can be rendered mathematically while most of us who are at the basic level of mathematical aptitude rendition of any phenomenon or event in life into a mathematical equation may be very difficult to to perceive or to even think about but most of the phenomenon of the phenomena in life can be translated into a mathematical equation with the use of computers big data can now be consolidated and used to be able to provide the 
the narrative for how life behaves. And also it is powerful because one formula can be used for several applications across different sciences. So this is how powerful the language of mathematics can be. So a simple linear equation can represent different types of um, different types of events from different from different sciences or different perspectives. Also, it is equally understood by men who speak different languages. When we say this, someone who is from Zimbabwe, someone who is from the farthest, most remote corner of the world who has been introduced to the language of mathematics, these people speaking different languages can understand the mathematical equation when these are rendered using the symbols and notation of mathematics. We compare this to the situation of the Tower of Babel, where when different races or different tribes congregated into one place and wanted to speak about their desire, their ambition to be, to be better than their creator, they couldn't have one simple language whereby they could all be unified and understand one another. Okay. Now, historically, the revelations of formulas that were translations of life or events or phenomenon in life with direct applications has given all of us a language that simplifies how we compute the amount of energy in a particular ecosystem or the amount of electrical power that runs through cables of wires or how much of the energy released by an atomic explosion results in the mushroom cloud that we see and how much of it is dissipated into the atmosphere so that we can understand what radiation is about or that the nature of life generally behaves as a normal probability distribution shaped like a bell shape. Also, Mathematics connects all sciences and the arts or humanities. When we talk about the different types of sciences or the different sections of the arts, there could be some form of push and pull as to what they are capable of or what they would like the world to to believe in or to understand. But all of these sciences or the arts and the humanities can all be connected with the use of mathematics. Some more than the others because we know that the pure sciences as chemistry, biology, the engineering will be more likely use the formulas of mathematics to be able to spread the kind of knowledge they generate while for let's say the arts they're less likely to use mathematics as as a medium of choice as a medium of communication of choice but when they would like to simplify their knowledge sharing then mathematics will be the language of choice. 
and also the language of mathematics being powerful is because it ignites the mind to think in structured rational forms so that one one form of narrative could be rendered in very simple and short forms or equations. The language of mathematics being beautiful is because it is rendered in actual designs or in nature. Examples of this will be the never-ending patterns of fractals. All of these flowers are found in my garden and some in my rooftop garden. This orange thing in here, the like the one that looks like the coronavirus is found in the rural areas, in the boondocks, this one renders repeated patterns. And where you view it from the smallest cell to the outermost cells, you get to see the same pattern. The three others are found in my rooftop garden and you get to see the repeated design that the language of mathematics is beautiful is because even let's say you can go from the simplest um, simplest form like um, making an equation for the cha-cha walk or the flipping of the coin to the language of the galaxies then this can be rendered in beautiful narratives of mathematics when we would like to concentrate of what it says rather than being afraid of its symbols. That the language of mathematics is elegant is because always the simplest form of an equation is the best form and that it uses an unmistakable form and meaning. Elegance would be someone who does not flaunt the kind of the kind of pattern that he wants to vividly convey, but that the same type of of message can be provided when one renders the same message in simplest form. As an example, when we look at the runway of models parading all sorts of dress designs, you can have the most complicated form, but the same dress design can be rendered most beautifully in its simplest form, which focuses the meaning on the form, not on the embellishments. Okay, making an analogy, if you would like to say that you love somebody, you can say it in flattering words, which may sound empty, or you can say it in the language of actions, which is most understood because it is simple, heartfelt, and its message is undeniably and unmistakably understood at the level of the heart, not of the mind. Okay, for the symbols of mathematics, let's look at some of them. We know the four fundamental operations, plus, minus, multiplication, and division. When we look at the four fundamental operations to simplify this, one really will only have to concentrate on one of the four. So if a child will have to learn 
plus, minus, multiplication, and division. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The simplest way to understand this is to just focus on one, which could be addition. So addition can actually embed subtraction, which means addition backwards is subtraction. Multiplication is addition that's skipping forward. And division is addition skipping backwards. So that's how one can simplify even the four fundamental operations to one simple operation. The alternate symbols for multiplication will be the asterisk, okay, the parenthesis, or the dot. For division, we also have alternate symbols, which are the slash and the long hyphen when used in a fraction. We also have the symbol of the equals and the not equal. And the inequality are of four kinds, the greater than, the greater than or equal, the less than, and the less than or equal. So each of the inequality tells us which ones will have to have the end point and which one will not include the end point. The grouping symbols uses brackets braces and parentheses the symbol for modulo would would be mod which provides the remainder in a division so an example will be 12 modulo 5 will be equal to 2 which tells us that 12 divided by 5 will have a remainder of 2 Okay, this is not a good example in the sense that 12 divided by 5 would give us 2 remainder 2. So let's say if we have 9 modulo 2, that would be equal to 1. That means when you divide 9 by 2, the remainder of that operation will be 1. The power or exponent is when we say x to the power a tells us that x is the base and a is the exponent. Also, we can use an alternate symbol for the exponent when we use the caret. So x, okay, caret sine a is the same as x to the power a. Okay, we have also the radical signs for square root, cube root, fourth root, and the nth root, and some other roots. When we have the square root, we know that we have the radical sign either with the 2 on the outer portion of the radical sign or without the 2. The square root tells us that it is the number when multiplied by itself gives us the number. So the square root of 64 is 8 because 8 times 8 is 64. The square root of 9 is 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. For the cube root, it will be the radical sign with the 3 on the outer portion of the radical sign, which tells us that the cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And the cube root of um, 27 is 3 because when we multiply 3 thrice, that gives us 27. Okay, for the fourth root of 64, no, for the fourth root of 16, that will be equal to 2 because when we multiply 2 4 times by itself that gives us 16 or the fourth root of 81 will be 3 because when we multiply 3 4 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 gives us 81 so the nth root of any number means when we need to provide the n number of times of itself will give us that number. For the symbol for percent, we have that thing where you have 
the percentage as a ratio of a part over the hundred parts. Okay. For part of a bigger set, we have PPM as part per million, PPB as part per billion, and PPT as part per trillion. So, PPM will be 1 over 1 million, PPB will be 1 over 1 billion, PPT will be 1 over 1 trillion. So, we can have the, the value as equal to 10 for PPM, 10 to the negative 6, PPB, 10 to the negative 9, and PPT, 10 to the negative 12. For some other symbols, we have the open interval, open parenthesis A, B, close parenthesis, which tells us that the interval will exclude the endpoint A as well as the endpoint B. For the closed interval, bracket A, B, close bracket, we know that the interval will include the endpoints A and B. Also, the imaginary number I is equal to the square root of negative 1. For the golden ratio or divine proportion, we use the symbol phi, which is equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2, or approximately equal to 1.618. And then we also have the Euler's number or the Euler's number, dependent on how you pronounce this. This E will be equal to 2.71828. And this one, for some of the scientists, is one of the great um, revelations of what this number stands for in many applications. Pi is symbolized as a special character using that symbol and using the non-repeating, non-terminating value of pi with so many decimal places, this is it. And the short form will be 3.14 or 3.1416. What is pi? Pi is equal to the circumference divided by the diameter of any circuit. In life, um, what the scientists are saying that there really is not a perfect circle in nature but that it is a mathematical ideal but that there are approximate circles in two-dimensional forms and the circle in three-dimensional form becomes a sphere and the mathematical relations of the sphere inside a cylinder are in itself sources of beautiful mathematics. With the preceding discussions, we then can say that when using the language of mathematics, we use the list symbols or words to make it the best rendition and that we can choose to make it either dynamic by using symbols that change according to defined parameters. We see this most particularly in computer programming where to prevent any form of viral attacks, antivirus systems can, um, can provide a randomizer for the specific password at a specific time by providing a subroutine or a reference manual where the program okay takes the current the current equivalence for a specific character in that password or one can make the language static 
that means for each symbol we have a specific equivalence okay so we can make an analogy with the latin language understood to be a dead language because any new form of um, word that one can generate at this particular time can be extracted from the base base words of the latin language the filipino language or the filipino language is not as good as that of the latin because words that are that are generated or developed at a current time or future time will not have a direct extracted form from the prior database of words of the Filipino language. Okay. Also, we can choose who can understand our language or codes. So we can either formulate our language, our mathematics, to be able to put a message across many, many receivers, or we can frame it such that that language can be understood by just a few as when you use codes. Okay, we can also use codes necessarily with encryption and decryption keys. So this is very critical or fundamental for the security agencies of any country where confidential information will have to be will have to be translated into code so that it remains to be um, understood only by those authorized to um, open up any form of message okay we can also use technical language subcultural lingo or use symbols such as those used in hieroglyphs where um, pictures are supposed to have their equivalence in specific forms such that a series of these symbols actually are statements which can be deciphered using mathematics as a base language for understanding these secret codes of the past or the codes that will have to be encrypted in the future. So thank you very much. This is where we end the discussion. I hope that you have been helped by this discussion. Let us know if this has helped you by a thumbs up or liking this video. If you would like to subscribe, you can do so, which is much appreciated. See you in our next video. Thank you very much.